Growing up, I had a neutral view about my body. I wasn't hugely confident in the way I looked, but I also didn't dislike what I saw in the mirror. Sure, I had a few hang-ups, not liking my freckles, feeling self-conscious when my legs started getting hairy, and I hated that my ears stuck out under my thin, straight hair. That one still bugs me sometimes. In my teens, I started to notice more things that I disliked about my body. I was more wary of my weight and what people thought of the way I looked. At first, it seemed like a natural part of puberty. My body was developing. I'd always been used to having an athletic body as I was a competitive gymnast, but it was now becoming more filled out, curvier, and more woman-like. I wasn't sure I liked that. Then, after a personal trauma, developing depression, and moving schools, things got more serious, and I developed an eating disorder. The level of hatred I felt for my body is hard to put into words. It was like my body was my own worst enemy. Today, I'm not going to be talking about my battle with anorexia, but I'd like to tell you about my journey after recovery. So, what is recovery, really? I always believed that full recovery meant being physically healthy, not engaging in disordered behaviors, and feeling neutral about my body again, going back to how I'd felt as a kid, just indifferent to my own reflection. I was discharged from eating disorder services after years of support and therapy. Wasn't that the goal? That, to me, was as good as it could get. This is where I plateaued for a few years, no longer engaging in my own self-destruction, but also not actively trying to improve my relationship with my body any further. I then started to ask the question, can people ever really love the way they look? I mean, truly, wholeheartedly feel comfortable and confident in your own body and treat it like a best friend. This is where art comes into the picture. I was inspired by body positive influencers who embraced their bodies, shared their flaws and unedited photos, dressed the way they wanted, and danced like no one was watching. They looked like they really did know the true meaning of self-love. They proudly showed off their stretch marks in crop tops. They photographed their chunky thighs when they sat down. When they ordered a dress online that arrived so ridiculously small that their cat would wear it better, they just laughed. No matter how many shaming comments they received, they rose above because they knew the true value of their bodies. I believe that for them, the actual process of taking photo shoots of their skin from all angles getting their friends to catch candid shots mid-sneeze and sharing both the perfect images alongside the embarrassing outtakes was in fact their own ritual of self-care. They were embracing their flaws fully, facing them head on and sharing them proudly with the world. And what's more, in doing so, they were encouraging millions of people of all ages, genders, and ethnicities to find comfort in the way they looked. 
I think we all have a duty to play our own part in the body positive movement. And when I say body positive, I mean promoting the acceptance of all bodies, big or small, able-bodied or disabled, male or female. Don't worry, you don't need to strip down and hire a photographer to catch all of your lumps and bumps, unless you really want to. But I think that we should all be mindful that what we put out into the world can have a huge impact on others. The photos we take, the levels of editing and retouching we do, the lyrics we write, the art we produce, it all sends a message. And I want my message to be of acceptance. As a professional artist myself, I decided to work on a new project, making my own body positive art. I've never been hugely confident in painting portraits or bodies. For years, I painted seascapes, nature, animals, abstract patterns, anything but humans. I felt the need to challenge myself. I started my first painting depicting women's bodies in February 2021. At first, I began to draw simple outlines of different bodies. Nothing too detailed, no faces, just getting the shapes and curves of different women onto paper. I'd look up all types of bodies online. Different poses, silhouettes, ethnicities, and try, try to get a wide range to draw inspiration from. This is where the magic happened. With each woman I drew, the more comfortable I felt in my own body. As I started to paint each line, I felt my hands relax into the process as I realized that there is no such thing as a perfect body. I couldn't get it wrong. If one breast was uneven to the other, if one leg was lumpier, if the arms were too skinny in proportion to the legs, it actually made it more realistic. We are so diverse and every fiber of our being is unique, including our flaws. I began to recognize parts of myself in some figures and I looked at the figures that were different to mine and I celebrated them. The curves, Scars, rolls, skin tones, shadows, heights, wrinkles. I wasn't just painting bodies. I was painting works of art themselves. As I made more paintings, my confidence only continued to grow and people's reactions encouraged me further still. At exhibitions, the responses to my body paintings have been so varied. Some people look away, too scared to be caught staring at the nude figures on display. Some people actually snigger. They point at the different bodies with grimaces. Some people are drawn straight to the body that most represents themselves and they will excitedly exclaim how they've recognized their own body. Some people comment on the skin tones and how wonderful it is to see diversity. Some parents say how they wish their kids were exposed to more art like this. It's a conversation starter, a thought provoker, and it's my way of joining the body positive movement. So, where do we go from here? I'm going to continue painting different bodies and exploring different forms and genders. I'd like to think that one day I could make enough pieces that everyone could recognize themselves in at least one picture. But the beauty is that will never happen because we are all one of a kind. And for everyone else here today, how can you explore your own body 
and learn to love it one day. Find something that challenges your beliefs of what a perfect body looks like and jump straight into it. In a crowded room, look around. Let your eyes soak up all of your differences. If one person stands out from the crowd, find yourself entranced by what makes them different and love them for that. Don't judge them. Grab a sketchbook and draw passers-by in a bustling street and notice the way we all walk differently and hold our own bodies in our own ways. Watch the street flow with an ever-changing current of shapes and sizes and put that onto your paper. Take a photo from up high in a building and notice all the different heads bobbing past. The different hairstyles, heights, shoulder widths. Attend a fitness class and really take in how we all move in our own ways, how our bodies bend and stretch with each motion. Go to the theater and see how each actor holds themselves differently and how they exaggerate their movements to reach the audience far at the back. Walk around a museum. Look at the sculptures from all angles and up close at the wrinkles and rolls carved into them. Use art to explore the human form. Take notice of the art all around you. Begin with accepting your body for how it is and know that that doesn't have to be the end. You can learn to love yourself. It really is possible. Thank you. <laughs>